Adventures of the Good Guy. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 8.32 Larry Boy and the Fib from Outer Space Junior and Laura needed one more play for their tea party. I know just where to get one, Junior said as he climbed to the bookcase. On the top shelf was his father's very special Harpagati collector's plate. Wobble, wobble, crash! The plate fell and broke into a hundred pieces. I got to go, Laura said. She didn't want to be around when Junior's dad got home. Junior was all alone until suddenly uh, from under the table popped a small purple alien. The name is Fabrilius Minimus, the alien said, but you could call me Fib. What you need is a story, Fib told Junior. Make up a story about how somebody else broke the plate. You mean lie? Junior asked. No, no, no. It's just a little fib, Fib said. A little fib can't hurt anybody. Before Junior knew it, his father was home. Junior had some explaining to do. Junior's father believed the story, and as Junior headed out to play with his new friend Fib, he noticed something very strange. Little Fib had gotten bigger. Out on the street, Junior met Percy P. Junior, Percy said, Laura got in trouble for breaking that plate, but she says she didn't do it. Who's telling the truth? Junior thought for a minute, then he said, He turned to leave with Fib, who was now even taller than Junior. Later that day, Laura, Lenny, and Percy spotted Junior walking home. There he is, Laura shouted. Junior's fibs had gotten them in a lot of trouble. They were mad. That's not what I said at all, Junior explained to his angry friends. You didn't break the plate. It was these space aliens. They came down and they grabbed these cows and they switched brains with the cows. 
and the cows with the brains of the space aliens broke the plate. With those words, Fib came around the corner. He was now taller than the tallest building in Bumbleburg. He bent down and grabbed Junior. Help! It's got me! I can't get free! Junior screamed. Don't worry, Junior. A little Fib can't hurt anybody, laughed Fib as he carried Junior away. Fib thundered down the street, cra crushing everything in his way. Police Chief Scooter barely got out of his car before Fib's giant foot smashed it flat. This is a job for Larry Boy, Scooter cried. Larry Boy was Bumbleberg's favorite superhero. High above the city, Junior struggled to get out of Fib's clutches. Fib, why are you doing this to me? Junior asked. I thought you were my friend. That's the thing about Fibs, Junior. They grow. Now that I'm big, you belong to me. Junior was sure Fib was going to eat him, but suddenly, not so fast, monster. Larry Boy came to save the day. Drop the asparagus, he ordered. Why don't you come here and make me, little purple man? Fib said, laughing. He was headed toward the water tower with Junior still in his clutches. Larry Boy launched his super suchineers, but Fib was too fast for the superhero. In one huge sweeping motion, the monster grabbed Larry Boy tightly with his other hand. Just as everything was looking completely hopeless, Alfred radioed from the Larry cave. Master Larry, he said. The computer says the monster is a lie. The whole thing is a big lie. How can I stop it? Larry Boy screamed as the monster squeezed him tighter and tighter. According to my calculations, you can do nothing, Alfred said. Fib can only be stopped by... Before Alfred could finish, Fib stuck Larry Boy in his mouth. Junior squirmed in the monster's grip. I didn't, he yelled. I broke the plate. With those words, Larry Boy popped out of the monster's mouth. Fib began to shrink. I said Laura and Lenny broke the plate, but it was me, Junior confessed. It was all a big lie. As Junior told the truth, Fib got smaller and smaller until he was so small that no one was afraid anymore. Dad, Junior finally said, I'm really sorry I broke your plate. Oh, Junior, Dan Asparagus said with a smile. I'm sure it was an accident. Let's just make sure that from now on we tell the truth the first time.
we know all we know that in all the things God works for the good of those who love him. Romans eight twenty eight A. The Ballad of Little Joe. A long, long time ago, way out west, lived twelve cowboy brothers. Their names were Reuben, Simeon, Izzy, Zeb, Gad, Ash, Dan, Nanny, and Jew. Hmm? Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Izzy, Zeb, Gad, Ash, Dan, Nancy, and Jude. There was also Baby Ben, but he was too little to go outside. Oh, and there was one more, Little Joe. Now, Little Joe was different from all his brothers. For one thing, he was a lot taller, and he didn't have a French accent. But more troubling to his brothers was that Little Joe was their father's favorite son. On Little Joe's birthday, his father gave him a beautiful wester vest. His brothers, who all got mittens for their birthdays, didn't like that one doggone bit. And that was when Little Joe headed into all sorts of trouble. His brothers were so jealous, they tossed him into an old mine shaft. Hey Jude, Little Joe called to his big brother from the darkness of the mine, but Jude didn't help. Instead, he sold Little Joe to a band of desperados. That's Western talk for robbers. Well, those robbers took Little Joe to Dodgeball City. There, they sold him to the owner of the Rooted Tootin Pizza Place.
From that day on, Little Joe worked hard selling pizza and root beer. But that didn't get little Joe down. He made a bunch of friends, and after a year, he was named Employee of the Month. Unfortunately, that made Miss Kitty, the waitress, burning mad. Miss Kitty was so jealous that she had little Joe thrown in jail. Little Joe, why is all this bad stuff happening to you? asked Sheriff Bob. Shucks, I don't really know, but God is good, Little Joe answered. I reckon I just have to keep doing what's right. One day, during an important meeting, the mayor of Dodgeball City had a dream. It upset him so much that he asked Little Joe to tell him what it meant. And with God's help, little Joe did just that. Let's get started. Earlier today, I had the strangest dream. Seven cows sat on a hill, so big and fat, I got my grill. I was thinking about a barbecue. Then seven scrawny ones came along and go the big fat cow. According to the dream, mm, Dodgeball City would have seven years of plenty, more food than they could ever eat. Then they would have seven years of sever famine, no pizza, and no root beer. To thank Little Joe for his help, 
the mayor made him, to thank Little Joe for his help, the mayor made him the second most powerful man in Dodgeball City. Little Joe got to work right away, preparing the town for the hard days to come. During the seven good years, the city stored up plenty of food. Just then, as Little Joe had said, the bad years of famine came. The people of Dodgeball City were fine, thanks to Little Joe, but Little Joe's family had just one pancake to share. They were doomed. So all 11 of Little Joe's brothers and his father traveled to Dodgeball City in search of food. When Little Joe saw them coming, he wasn't sure he could trust his brothers, so he greeted them wearing a tricky disguise. But Little Joe's brothers hadn't come to Dodgeball City to cause trouble. They needed help for themselves and for their father. We would like to buy some food from you, Jew told Little Joe. Little Joe soon realized how God had used all the bad and things that had happened to him for good. Thanks to the hardships he had endured, he could now help his family. Little Joe forgave his brothers, and they had the best family reunion the West had ever seen. Yeehaw! Don't forget to do good. Don't forget to share with others. Hebrews 13.16a Lyle the Kindly Viking Once upon a time in a village a Once upon a time in a village by the sea lived a band of Vikings. For a time there was a little village by the sea where there dwelt a band of Vikings. Surprise. Oh, it's gone too? Mm -hmm. Where are we going? 
Just like other Vikings, these terrors of the sea spent their days pillaging and plundering. Those are fancy words for taking other people's stuff. The Vikings were stealing, and their boats were so fast that no one could catch them. But there was one Viking who didn't like to be so mean. His name was Lyle. Instead of going on the raids, Lyle stayed home and made crafts. Potholders, to be exact. After the other Vikings returned from their raids, Lyle would take the small bag of loot they gave him, along with some potholders, and head out across the sea in his tiny boat. One day, Sven and Otar decided to follow Lyle to see where he was going. What they saw through their binoc what they saw through their binoculars was troubling, to say the least. Lyle rowed his boat all the way back to the monastery that the Vikings had raided the night before. But instead of taking more of their things, Lyle returned the small bag of loot to the monks. Later that day, 
Lyle explained to his friends that sharing with the monks was really a lot more fun than stealing from them. When I share, I get my share of friends, he said. Finn and Otar liked the sound of that, so they decided not to tell on Lyle. In the meantime, though, they knew Lyle would be in big trouble if Olaf learned what he was doing. If Olaf finds out, you'll be in big trouble. Uh, y you can just talk. Oh, right. <clears throat> if Olaf finds out, you know. Well, Olaf's not gonna find out. This will be our little secret. Thanks, guys. So they resolved not to let Olaf find out. They're just a the next week, Olaf, the biggest, meanest Viking, was out on another raid. Hey, isn't that loyal over there? Olaf asked his crew. Sven and Otar tried to distract Olaf so he wouldn't see what Lyle was doing. What do we do? Oh, we gotta distract Olaf! Look, Olaf, there's a fish with a pretty yellow circle at the bottom of the backside of his fin. Look, Olaf, there's another and another and another! The little one has got a funny grin. Look, Olaf, Olaf, wait up and the water is the biggest fish I think I've ever seen! Look, Olaf, we got a little closet orange and yellow markings in the north and the iridescent green. Hey, Olaf, there's a turn on these wearing pig pajamas and he's got a couple of hand up on his lid. Look, Olaf, very close. He's swimming very quickly. Chase it down a hundred of times, Gwen. Look, Olaf, 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 there's a weather that sets away the bear. Look, Olaf, it's a mermaid. It's an ostrich. It's a bunny. Look, Olaf, please look anywhere but. I don't see anything. What? There. It was too late. Olaf saw Lyle as he was leaving the monk's island. That little Viking is a big trouble, Olaf yelled. The Vikings rode as fast as they could toward Lyle's tiny boat. It didn't take long for the Vikings to catch up to Lyle, but suddenly a huge storm blew in.
the waves were so big that all the Vikings were thrown into the sea. Hang on, Lyle. Hang on, Lyle. Help is on the way, the monks yelled as he scrambled to save him from the angry waves. What about my friends? Lyle asked when, they, when he reached dry land. Well, they were mean to us, the monks replied. I'm pretty sure God wants us to help everyone, not just those who are nice, Lyle said. Oh, right, the monks said. We're monks. We should know that. So the monks had a change of heart. They saved all the Vikings from the angry sea that day. Because Lyle had made friends with them by sharing. From that day on, the Vikings stopped their stealing and started being kind. They even started calling themselves the Sharers of the Sea. Don't let evil overcome you. Overcome evil by doing good. Romans 12, 21. The End